Number 98. Which of these molecules and ions contain polar bonds, and which of these molecules and ions have dipole moments? And then we have PCl4 minus. Okay, so let's first find out if this ion has polar bonds. Now I say that it's an ion because remember, ions are always charged species, and since this is a negative, that means that it's an ion. Now, in order to find out if something has polar bonds, I want to see those actual bonds. And if I look at just what they gave me, PCl4 minus, do you see any bonds? No, I don't see any bonds. So with these types of questions, especially if they're asking for polarity or dipole moments, take a step back and draw the Lewis structure. It is one extra step, but I promise you, uh, just visualizing what this compound actually looks like will help you unlock a lot of answers. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to draw the, the Lewis structure of PCl4 minus. Now there's a lot of videos on this channel just designated to drawing Lewis structures. We go step by step. And that one, you know, those, those videos are more of a slower approach to drawing Lewis structures. So if you do need more guidance, you can always check out those videos. But my suggestion to you here is just pause the video, see if you can draw this, and see if your answer matches mine. So for PCl4, we have phosphorus in the middle, surrounded by the four chlorine. So one, two, three, four. And now I'm going to draw a single bond for each chlorine to phosphorus bond. And then we'll work on the chlorines. They need the octet. So they need six dots around each chlorine to get that octet. And then for the phosphorus, it had five valence electrons. So it's using one, two, three, four to make those bonds. I have one more, and then I have a negative, which means that I gained, so I have two more. And now since it's a ion, I do have to bracket it and put a negative up there. Now that's the full Lewis structure. So now let's find out if we have polar bonds. Clearly here, now I can see that the bonds are chlorine to phosphorus. There's four of them, right? Whether I look at it this way, it's the same bond as this one, same bond to this one, same bond to this one. So when you're, or when you're trying to find out the actual bonds, all you have to do is just take one of them between your two elements. So in this case, I guess we'll do, well, we're definitely gotta do Cl to P. So maybe I'll say, okay, we have a chlorine, bound with a phosphorus. Okay, so polar bonds, that just means that you have a um, not symmetrical pole of electrons. You have to have some type of electronegativity difference between 0.4 and 1.8. And just know that a difference is just a fancy word for saying subtraction, right? So you gotta get those electronegativity values, subtract them, and see if you're in the realm of being a polar bond. So let's see, we got a chlorine. Chlorine's electronegativity is 3.0, and phosphorus is a 2.1. Now when you're taking your electronegativity difference, always take your higher number and minus the lower one. If you do get a negative, just always make that into a positive, because electronegativity differences, they have to be the absolute value. So I'm gonna subtract these, and I get 0.9. And 0.9 does make the cut in this realm, right? It's in between 0.4 and 1.8. So I know that these bonds between chlorine and phosphorus, these are polar bonds. So there is an unequal sharing of electrons in those bonds. Now we just have to see, well, do we have a dipole moment? And a dipole moment is just a fancy way for saying across the whole board, across the whole ion, there's an unequal sharing of electrons. And a dipole moment only comes from if you have a polar molecule as a whole or a polar ion. In this case, I'll say ion because we do have the charge here. So that's when SNAP comes into play. S-N-A-P, symmetrical nonpolar, asymmetrical polar. If we want a dipole moment, we know that we have to be on the polar side of things. So our whole molecule as a, in general has to be asymmetrical. But you might say, well, wait a minute, I got four chlorines. They're all the same, right? 
But here is a really, really, really important thing to know. That any t- any time that you have a central atom that has any types of lone electrons, they are automatically polar molecules. So in this case, I do have my phosphorus, and I see that I have two lone electrons. One is good for me. Two is better. Three, any amount. If that central atom has lone electrons, it is automatically polar ion or molecule. So since we have a polar ion, I know that this will have a dipole moment. And this can be seen by saying that this chlorine bond will get canceled out by this chlorine bond. This chlorine bond will get canceled out by this one. But there's a lone pair that does not have any canceling. So that's basically where it comes from. But we have answered the question. We got polar bonds here and we have a dipole moment. And that's it. I hope this helped. Thank you for coming to the to the channel, coming to this video to get your chem answers. Um, yeah, check the channel out. We got physics and math videos on the channel. We love to help you guys out and we hope you're doing well. Keep studying hard and I will talk to you in later lessons. Okie dokie. Thanks so much for all your support and thanks for being part of the community. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.